Hello and welcome everyone to the final webinar of Cyverse's Spring 2022 webinar series. I'm Tina Lee, Cyverse's User Engagement Officer. Today, our webinar is presented by Michelle Young on leveraging Cyverse's Terrain API data and apps to build a custom web application. To see other webinars from this spring and earlier, please visit our webinars page at www.cyverse.org slash webinars. Uh, many of you already use Cybers and know that we are an NSF funded cyber infrastructure project whose mission is to build and deploy a national computational research infrastructure for life sciences. This free webinar series is designed to fulfill an important part of our mission to train researchers and educators how to use Cybers' computational resources. Let's take care of some housekeeping really quickly and then on to Michelle's presentation. Uh, our webinar today is about 30, 35 minutes long with time at the end for your questions. Please open the Zoom chat window to write your questions there for Michelle and she'll answer them after she's done. All of our webinars are recorded and I'll post this video recording to our website's webinar page in a day or so. Uh, we now have more than 65 webinars organized into playlists on science, technology, and cybers platform topics to help you learn and do your science. So now I'm pleased to introduce Michelle Young, our presenter. Michelle is a research software engineer at the University of Arizona's Data Science Institute. One of her main assignments is to the Data Management and Analysis Core, known as DMAC, at the U of A's Superfund Research Program, which studies the effects of mine tailings and arsenic on the surrounding environment and on human health. Using Cyverse, where the Superfund data are stored, Michelle has developed a custom web application for Superfund researchers to create and improve their data pipelines, processes, and data management, and to help align the program's research goals with goals to make their data more fair, which most of you know stands for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So all of that said, welcome, Michelle. Hello. Oh, you're good. OK. Hello. <laughs> so I'm Michelle. And today I will be talking about how you can use Cybers to help you build custom web applications that can help you with your research. And I think in our day-to-day -day life and work life, we all have software and apps that um, do exactly what we need them to do. And they're really helpful to help us be more efficient in our daily lives. And so I think we can do the same thing with our data analysis. We can build custom web applications to make it, to make it easy to analyze our data because that's what we should be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and what's really cool about Cybers is that it gives us a lot of tools that we can use that take away a lot of the challenges associated with um, building custom research web applications. Or they don't take away the challenges, but Cybers absorbs a lot of the a lot of the heavy the heavy lifting of your web app. Um, oops. Okay. So what you can expect from today, if you're a researcher and this is you um, in your research lab and you have all of this data that you need to analyze, um, I'm hoping to show you um, what your future could look like if you automate some of that with a custom web application. Um, and if you're a developer, I'm hoping, or if you're a developer who's already working on research web applications or tasked with developing research web applications that you'll walk away with why Cybers is valuable um, to integrate into your web application and some of the tools that you'll need to integrate with Cybers. So first I'm gonna give just a quick background on the Superfund Research Program. I know Tina talked about it a little bit. Um, so we're funded by the NIEHS and um, the goal of the Superfund Research Program is to um, have researchers investigate um, human health hazards due to hazardous 
um, waste that's in our environment that a lot of which we've created. Um, so at the University of Arizona Superfund Research Center, we currently have five projects being funded. And if we count up um, our investigators, our graduate students, our postdocs, our group ends up being over 40 researchers. And then um, we also have our data management and analysis core, which is where I'm at. And our goal is to work together to study how exposure to mine waste, um, particularly arsenic, contributes to the development of diabetes in the surrounding communities um, nearby those mines. And so since we have so many projects going on, um, so many different people working on these projects, we have a lot of different types of science happening, um, which means that there's a lot of different types of data that all need to be analyzed in different ways. And the way that our DMAC has been trying to approach this is to build um, this collection of custom web applications that makes it really easy for researchers to do sort of the analysis that they need to be doing regularly um, for their data, just to make it faster and more efficient. Um, so the app that we're gonna be talking about today is called Demeter, and I'll be demoing that shortly, but um, first I'm gonna go just explain a little bit of the use case why we created this app and why maybe you would be interested in creating an app like this. So why build a custom web app? Um, so the Demeter app that we developed is for specifically for um, what's called next gen sequencing data um, or it's genomic data. And basically the way that <laughs> Um, you submit your samples to be analyzed and you get back this data and it's sort of lowest level. It's called a fast Q, a fast Q file. And um, so you have those files and you what needs to be done to transform this data into something that you can use for more complex analysis is that, or in at least in our case, we wanted to run these um, a few command line tools on these files um, to process that data into a higher level um, form that could be used for visualization so that we can make discoveries from that data. And I think our use case can easily be general generalized to um, basically all researchers where they have you know, data in its raw form, um, whether that be video, image data, um, genomics data, whatever. Um, and then you have to do a lot of data processing and analysis before you can get to the point where you're really making discoveries from that data. And so it's this um, data processing and analysis that tends to take a lot of time, a lot of um, like manual, <laughs> Um, a lot of people to do this manual work, and then that ends up being a lot of money. So what we're doing is we're sort of making this investment up front to build web applications that make it really easy for researchers to run this regular analysis of their data so that it takes away a lot of the, I don't know, like it'll it, like it helps free up. Um, researchers' time instead of doing this sort of mundane but important task of moving or transforming the raw data into something that you can actually analyze. Um, we can move all that um, into a web application so that they don't have to, or researchers don't have to be, you know, manually going on the command line processing all their data this way. And then they have more time or they can make their way to discovery faster. Um, so I'm gonna 
Um, go ahead and demo the app that we're talking about today, which is called Demeter, which is for the um, genomics data that I was talking about. So if we go ahead and go to, oh, here. So this is our um, apps portal that we've built for our researchers. Um, just a central location where they can access all of their apps. So we'll go ahead and launch Demeter for the um, next gen sequencing data. And the first thing that you'll notice is that you're asked to log in with your Cybers credentials. And this is one of the ways that um, you can utilize Cybers to make your app development easier. Um, first of all, the users, if they have their data on Cybers, they'll already have a Cybers account. And that makes it so that they have one account to upload their data, the same account to analyze their data, and there's not all these extra accounts that they have to keep track of. Um, so that's one way that you can integrate your app with Cybers. And then when you first reach um, sort of the home page, this will just show the files that you have uploaded on Cybers in the data store. And um, I only have a few files. This is kind of our test folder. But each um, investigator in our group, they're each working under one of the five projects. And each of those projects has a place or a folder on Cybers where their data should be stored. So when they open the app, they'll see that a list of all the files in the like folder that they're assigned. And then if they want to analyze that data, it's just, you know, selecting a few options and then clicking launch. Um, so first of all, they select their, like, um, the type of data they're analyzing. So in this case, we're going to be looking at RNA sequencing data and then um, selecting a read, uh, yeah, read type unpaired or paired. I'm going to do unpaired because that's the types of files I have. And then what we've done here is made a really easy to use interface for grouping the files in the way that they need to be analyzed. For example, these group, this set of four files goes together and this set of four files goes together. So we've built this interface that where they can just select the files that they want to put in each group. Um, they can create an, another group, group some more files. And additionally, they can create more groups, but I only have eight files. So I'm going to just create two groups. And then here is where they just enter in some last parameters. Um, what's actually happening here is um, in this series of command line tools that we are running on this data. Um, it's mapping these FASTQ files to a reference genome so that we can do like visualization of gene expression and things like that. Um, so we'll just select these parameters, these. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and submit our analysis. And so they're next directed to a page where they can see that their analysis was submitted. And then it takes a little bit to start running. But if I refresh my page here in just a second, we'll see that okay, one of them started running. So each of those um, two groups of files that they created have, create, created have each um, launched an analysis. And what's happening here is none of this analysis um, is actually happening in my web application here. It's actually happening on Cybers. So if I log into the discovery environment, let's see if I'm logged in, I should have some notifications here that I submitted two, analysis, two analyses and that they're running now. And then I'll also get notified when they're done running. And then at that point, we have these different types of files that are those um, higher level that's the higher, higher level data that you can use for visualization. Let's see, okay. Back to here.
Okay. So basically this app has allowed um, researchers to launch this routine analysis of this type of data in just like maybe a minute or two and they don't have to worry about what's happening. Michelle, excuse me, would you mind uh, sharing your full screen? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. your slides, thank you. Yes, all right. So that's the app we're talking about that integrates with Cybers. Um, so next, I'm going to introduce the tools that I used um, to be able to integrate with Cybers. Um, so what's actually, so I said that the analysis was not running in my web app, it's running on Cybers. So Cybers actually offers um, these things called Cybers apps that you can build um, that allow you to run your analysis directly on Cybers. So if you're not familiar with Cybers apps, um, if you're not going all the way to building your custom web application, this kind of gets to you a lot of the way there in you know, making sure that you don't have to go into the, uh, the command line or something every time you want to analyze this data. Um, it lets you create an app and also makes it really easy to develop this, um, like a little web interface for you to, um, I guess, select your parameters for your analysis. So choose which files you want to analyze and any additional information that you need to provide uh, to analyze your data. Um, okay. And the, well, let me see, do I want to talk about this first? Okay, yeah. So to build a Cypress app, I'm not gonna go into a lot of depth, but I'm gonna explain a little bit about what's happening. Um, so basically what happens when I uh, click launch is I am um, telling Cybers to start my analysis that I've um, built with the Cybers app that I've created. And that's spinning up what's called a Docker container, which is sort of this um, enclosed computing environment where you can install all the software that you need and then run your analysis on the, the data that you've specified with the parameters that you've specified as well. And the great thing about this is that you don't need to worry about running the analysis on your own computer or your, um, your lab machines. Um, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, installing all of this software on your computer that you might not want to have on your computer. You can let it all live in cybers and not have to deal with all the headaches that come with trying to get all the software and the, the right versions on your computer and it conflicts with other stuff. Um, it makes it a lot easier. Um, so basically all you need to do to create the Cybers app is writing what's called a Docker file that specifies um, what software environment or what like computing environment to use, like what operating system or what um, software you need to install and then it'll run your analysis. Um, so you do have to write some code to get to have a Cybers app, but it's this sort of initial investment that you write once and you can benefit from forever. Um, and so I'm not gonna go into what that code looks like, but all of our, or the, like we have our, one of our Docker files that are public on our GitHub repo. Um, all of our stuff will be public in the future. I looked, I thought it was all public, but I realized um, some of them were private. So we'll work on getting that so that all of our Docker files and apps are open source. Um, and the other great thing about um, Cybers apps is that they can be used standalone without the custom web app. Um, like I can show you what one of the, or what my app looks like that we just ran in the Demeter app when I launched that analysis. 
Um, so I'll go over to the discovery environment. And then if I go over to apps, my apps are still um, under development. And this is the app that I just ran actually. And it's not just one app, it's actually a workflow of several apps that are sort of passing the output of one app into the next one so that we have our like data pipeline. Um, but this interface here, I did have to do a little bit. Um, I had to build a little bit of this, but it wasn't writing code or anything. Cybers provides an interactive interface to um, sort of build this UI or user interface. Um, so you can use the Cyrus app to build standalone without having to develop a custom web app, so that makes things even easier. Um, so for the app that we just launched, this Demeter RNA-seq, um, this is what's performing all of those, or processing that data through those, um, that chain of command line tools. Um, so it's easy to use. Um, it's just like filling out a regular um, web form, but it does require effort on the, the researcher. So for example, when right before we submitted the analysis, we specified that we wanted to map against the human genome. If they want to map against the human genome, they have to browse to the location of that genome, wherever it's stored in the data store. Um, so it's just a bit of extra work. Um, they can still select the files they want to analyze, but it's not as custom as an, of an interface, but it still works and it's still great to have um, if you don't want to go through the steps of uh, building a custom web app. This is, you know, most of the way there. Um, the other thing is we had group made two groups of files when we submitted the analysis and those each, um, we saw that those each launched their own analysis. So for each group of files, they'd have to go through this, these four steps, select those parameters, which is not difficult, but it would take time if you have, you know, several groups of files that you wanna analyze. All right. Oh, and the other thing about Cybers apps is that there's already, I'll go back to the discovery environment. There's already so many apps that have been built by other researchers, um, Cybers staff. So if you find that there's an app that does the analysis that you want, you can go ahead and use that app without having to build your own. And if you're already if you've already built your own app within Cybers, that's what you can use. Um, you don't have to go through this step. You can use it in your custom web application as is. So I just want to emphasize this point. It, it does take effort to build the Cybers app, but you make that inv initial investment in the beginning, and that makes your life easier for forever. Forever. Um, so, um, a quick note about when you're building your web application, um, you can use any web stack that you want. So, it's like bring your own web stack. Um, you don't have to use any certain technologies to build your web application. Um, you'll be able to integrate ciphers with um, any type of web application. So for the web application I showed, I'm using um, a Python-based framework called Django and a JavaScript-based framework called React. And I'm using React to build the user interface. So sort of, you know, lay out the tables, um, build the, the front end, the, the website interface that I just showed. And then Django is kind of in the background. Um, 
it contain it i use it to for database management and also to build my api and we'll talk a little bit about apis in a second um, and i'm not going to go into the django or react code um, but the code for this app is available on github and that'll all be linked um, at the end but there's a concrete example of a web app that can integrate with cybers. Um, so you can kind of look at that if you want to use Django and React and modify that to meet your own to meet your own needs. And then the next piece of technology that I'm going to talk about that helps you integrate with cybers is called the Terrain Web API. And so if you're not familiar with APIs, it stands for Application Programming Interface. And that's basically just a way that you can interact with a piece of software. In our case, this is a web API. So it's a collection of URLs that you can use to communicate with Cybers using something called web requests. Um, some things you can do with the Terrain API is to get files that you have stored on the Cybers data store. Uh, you can launch analyses like we just did. Um, you can add metadata to files. Um, so if you're, um, if you don't already know, if you're using the discovery environment, you're already using the train web API because the train API is what drives the discovery environment. Um, so just a really quick, when you're in the discovery environment and you go look at your data, this is your browser is making an API request to the Cybers Terrain API to um, get those files and folders that you have in your home directory. So that's sort of an example of the Terrain API um, that you were already using if you didn't know it. Um, but you can also use the Terrain API outside of this discovery environment. Um, and that's how we can build our custom web application. So everything you can do in the discovery environment, you can basically do outside of the, the discovery environment um, using various ways of making web requests. So you can make a web request from the command line using the curl command. You can make a, or you can, use a train API with um, Python using their requests library. And that means that you can also, if you know you don't wanna write a custom web app, another option that you have if you're looking to automate part of your workflow um, is to write scripts that make calls to the train API. And then of course we can make web requests from a custom web app, which is what we were doing in, in um, the Demeter app that I showed. And at the bottom here, um, you can find the Terrain API documentation. And if you're new to APIs or wanting to see more specifics about how to use the Terrain API, um, I've also linked one of the Cybers webinars given by one of the Cybers staff members that I found really helpful when I was starting to figure out how to use the Terrain API. All right, so the last uh, piece of technology I'm gonna discuss is called Keycloak. And Keycloak is the service that Cybers uses for user login and it supports what's called single sign-on. So, if I go back to my um, like web app portal, we can see that you know we have a lot of apps, but we're using this Cybers Keycloak login across all of the apps. So you can you don't have to log into every app separately. You can just log in with your Cybers credentials once, and you can access all of the apps without having to. I don't know, have a login for each one. Um, and if you're interested in using the Cybers login functionality in your own web app, 
Um, you want to contact cyber support because they have to add you to their key cloak system. And of course, I think cybers would be excited to know that you're building web apps with cybers as well. Um, and what you'll get back is some information that you can configure in your app to connect to key cloak. And what that'll allow you to do is, first of all, not have to worry about having your own login system. You already have Cyverses. And then that also means that we're already connected to their Cyverse account so that we can make, we have the information we need to make um, web requests to the Turing API. Um, and they'll have permission to, you know, get their files launch analyses because they're logged in through Cyverse. Right. And so those are all the, every, I guess everything I had to talk about, but I just wanted to close with some um, points about why, why I think you should build with Cybers. Um, I think as we saw, it helps, even if you're not going all the way to building a custom web application and you're just sort of doing the middle ground and building a Cybers app, you're still, automating part of your research workflow, which means that your time is free to work on other things. Um, you don't have to do the same thing over and over again. You can sort of offload that to um, this web application and this combination of your web application and Cyverse app, and then spend more time, um, I guess, doing whatever you want. <laughs> um, the other thing is that from a development perspective, it offloads a lot of the challenges associated with um, like performing analyses on your own machine. Um, you, don't, you don't have to worry about maintaining, you know, a server. You don't have to worry about um, your environment, making sure all your software is installed that's already handled and you just needed to specify that once by writing that Docker file and building your app. Um, let's see, is that all I wanted to say? Um, and then lastly, whether you're building an app within Cybers or you're building a custom web application, you have the potential to really benefit your research community, those who are doing research that's similar to yours, if they have the same types of data or they want to try reproducing your analysis, the app is already on Cybers that anyone can run. Um, and same with a web application. Even if you start, you know, you build a web application for your research group, if it benefits you, there's other people who are doing similar research to you that it could benefit. And so it has the potential to, you know, you've developed this tool that's useful. And so it can benefit everyone in your research community. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to give a shout out to my DMAC team. Uh, we have Dr. Ike Sang Uli as our um, leader and <laughs> Nirav is also our leader. <laughs> And then um, Anthony and I kind of do more of the day-to-day -day, um, data analysis and software engineering. And then lastly, I have listed um, some resources, so links to the code for the, cyber, the Docker um, file for the Cybers app that we developed. Um, code for the Django React app that we developed. Um, I do know that documentation is pretty lacking, but I'm gonna try to get that um, already so that it's, these projects are something other people can use. And then I've also linked some Cyrus learning resources that I thought were really helpful when I was um, trying to develop this web application. And then that's, that's all I have. 
Um, does anyone have any questions? Thanks, Michelle. Yes, there are questions. So right. <laughs> have a sip of water and I'll, I'll read the first question. Okay. Um, on your slide about making terrain API calls, the third option was using an app. In your Demeter app, it was using requests inside Django that made your calls, or was it something different? So yes, I was, um, yes, I was using the Python requests library within my Django API. So from my React front end, I am calling my own API for my own Django app. And then the that function is calling the this the terrain API. Um, so does yeah. that answer the question? <laughs> right. Um, we have a small enough crowd that if you want to wane, you're more than welcome to unmute and, and ask a follow-up if if Michelle, uh, if you need further clarification on your question. Um, no, he says that was good. Thank you. Uh, another question. Hi, thank you for your talk. How does a researcher know about all the data sets available in the different projects? Do you have a catalog for them as well as you do for your web apps? I, I think they're talking about the DMAC database. Okay, so currently um, the data from our Superfund group is private until um, researchers are ready to make it public. Um, and the same with our web applications, they're currently only open to our super fun researchers here just because we're kind of the our the DMAC is kind of a new thing in our super fun research center. It only got added in um, we only got started like two to three years ago. So we're still making sure that we can support our super fun researchers before we make these things open to the public. Hi. Um, well, that was not my question, no, because I am not trying to access them. I'm saying if you have a catalog for you researchers, so how do you, because what happened if I don't want to see the apps, but I want to see the list of all the data sets that you have in the project and the metadata to understand. And also, as you mentioned in Cybers, when you get, when you log in, you will see just the data sets that you have or people have shared with you. So if I go to the catalog for the data sets that you have at the moment, and I see, oh, this A1 looks super attractive to me, how do I ask the researchers to share it with me? Um, do you, have you implemented that or no? Yet? No, so we, we, I don't think we're at that point yet because we don't actually have any, data that's currently public but that's definitely um but even something. when you are like forget that it's public you, you keep in mind that it's private but it's private between you researchers and you have 40 plus researchers so the what you have can be the data can be still private but the way to implement the catalog could be public or that's what you should be able to share as you are sharing how you manage the different apps, right? Yeah, no, that's a great idea. Um, I think when we make, that's definitely something that we should be doing. Yeah, I agree with well, you. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. So that's why I was super interested because I thought <laughs> of the same way that you have the catalog for the apps with all the information and all that stuff. And since they call many different data sets, um, yeah, and um, that's definitely so that that's why we have um, like this sort of app, this whole portal. So it's not just mm -hmm. the apps. Like mm -hmm. this is sort of where we want researchers um, to be able to go to find everything related to what our DMAC is doing. So like we have our YouTube channel linked. We have a forum that people can sign up for. So that's definitely something that we could add here. Um, like what data sets we have. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, uh, Paolo, this, uh, this is Nira. What you can also think of this as, you can write your own custom web app that can read the catalog. So all the DMAC data goes into a shared location 
But as Michelle mentioned that that location um, is only visible to the team. And so you can construct what you want, much like what Michelle has done and show those. And so the discovery of that um, can be limited to the way you want it to be discovered and shown to people who are not part of your team. But mm -hmm. when they see it, they can make a request and the request comes to you or whoever is the person that's coordinating the data management for your team. Mm -hmm. And then you can decide whether you know they've given you enough information and you want to give them access to uh, that data set. So the discoverability, because you are private, is harder. But if you go to uh, what in Cyverse is called data commons, you can make a data set public and even Google uh, data set search will find it and then you don't have to worry about it. But in many projects that only happens after they have published. Yes. So if you want to fill that gap in between, you can just write your own custom web app that has the permission to see those files, mm -hmm. index them and then show an index, do what you want. Then if a person wants to request it, they fill out the form with whatever details you want from them. Mm -hmm. And then you can decide whether you want to grant it or not. And the good part is within the API, you can decide that they have filled everything and you can even grant them that permission um, from within your application. So all of that is um, completely doable by the APIs that Michelle uh, yeah, mentioned. Exactly. I, I think it will have the same structure. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Nirav. Great. Are there any other questions for Michelle or Nirav? Also, Sarah's online, Sarah Roberts, and she was uh, a major contributor to the Terrain API. Um, OK, well, if I don't see any other questions, um, thank you, Michelle. Great job and appreciate you sharing your skills and knowledge and custom building web apps using Cybers, which is really great to see. I'd like to uh, offer a challenge to all of you out there that if you do build a web app, just let me know and I'm happy to promote you and your app and your effort uh, through either one of these webinars or uh, into our community. So please uh, take me up on that, okay? And um, anyway, our webinars will be on summer hiatus, uh, but we'll be busy working on a whole new lineup of science and technology webinars uh, to begin again in the fall. So keep an eye on our webinars page for those listings. And in the meantime, everybody uh, take care and we'll see you back in the fall. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Bye.